Hi everyone, this is Omar Altwaini. Welcome back to my new course. Today, I'm going to talk about an interesting topic for a large team of students and researchers who are interested in landslides, sinkholes, debris flows, and any hazards that related to precipitation threshold analysis. I wish you enjoy the course, the tools that will be used. It's Microsoft Excel and QGIS, the, G the open source GIS software that will help us to visualize rainfall stations and the incidents. We'll start to introduce the course through the presentation slides then practical sessions. Let's begin. Along the course, we will have to go through a few points. First, the experience that I would like to share with you and we'll focus about the threshold that induces landslides mainly. Second, we will talk about how to prepare the data when you receive it from the agencies, what you need to do about it, how to fix the errors if there is an error, how to find the errors, how do you know if there is some kind of uncertainty or misleading points or points that digitizes or recorded where there were no rainfall storms. Also, we will learn how to do correlations between the stations. Sometimes we have a limited number of stations or there is a distance between them and there is few points between and we don't know which station that it's suitable for this point or vice versa. So we need to do this kind of correlation to show that these two stations are valid to the specific distance. Then we will go through the special pattern analysis for incidents and stations. So we will learn how to do the distance matrix using the QGIS nearest neighbor analysis. That's in case we have some outliers. We want to find out where are those uh, outliers and how to delete them because the incident is much related to another station that is not related to our existing data. Then, if there is two stations or three stations that are close to each other and there is a triangle of area between linking them together and there, there are some points between them. So, uh, you might be confused which station that you should choose. And then I will introduce to some uh, of the most frequent precipitation threshold analysis in the literature. So we will focus on the intensity and duration, intensity and accumulative, or with in relation with the dates and the antecedents and the other thresholds. After we get the thresholds, we should check the reliability for those thresholds. So reliability index is one of the main features that will be used also in the analysis. And then we will sum up the process step by step to refresh your memory. Last points I added, it's the temporal analysis. In some cases, when you are doing susceptibility mapping, you need to understand how often this hazard will be repeated in the future. What do you call it? Reoccurrence events. I want to introduce to you a very nice uh, a table prepared by some of almost 200 articles from 1975-2008 and this is uh, a project actually prepared by scientists who are experts in this field. You might refer to this website, I give the credit here for the website and you have the two links, one link they will sum up all the thresholds, rainfall thresholds, and a link that will introduce the table and every variable related to that threshold. So here the first link, you get the website, then you notice now the kind of study areas that the data contain from the South America, to the Indonesia, Asia, and North America, and the source of uh, continent and then the zone and the threshold type and then landslide code the equation which is the this is the threshold and there is a reference for this paper so you can see here almost 200 articles listed in this table so what i did is i made it a bit easier for you to follow up I listed all the variables actually in the Excel sheet and I summarized them 
uh, just to show you the other link for example now when you study okay this equation so you will see the I map on the D so what is the I map on the D so all the variables actually are listed here for you on reference and with the unit we will come to this also uh, to the most important one in the presentation as well so this uh, website actually is a great tool it's helped me a lot because if you are interested for example in any of those thresholds you can just click on it and then it will start to list the papers based on the threshold type that you chose and this is an explanation for this uh, uh, threshold type so it's as you said it's updated in 2008 just let's take an insight now about the the most frequent uh, uh, threshold here so here we have our table listed and then I chose the types of the thresholds and the frequent and the frequency. So we notice here from the 200 sample, we have almost 202. We have the uh, almost 40% uh, of all the literature around the world since 1975. They use the intensity duration. And then also they use again the intensity duration, but with the map, with the uh, mean value actually here. We will see this later. Also, the accumulative and the duration. So the intensity with the duration, the accumulative with the duration are the most frequent uh, thresholds in the literature. So based on this. It will make easier for you to follow up the literature and when you are writing your article just follow the table mentioned about discuss a little bit about the papers mentioned updated if you are working on the 2018 that we are recording today and then you can start with what which uh, thresholds that i uh, mentioned i will mention today in the practical uh, session which is mostly focused on the id ed and the Antecedent. Okay, now we come to the nice part, which is related to the experience. As much as you are working or studying about this topic, you will find the dilemmas and uncertainties. You can see it on the right side. Uh, we have the uh, one study area and you have two stations and a few points or a few landslides around it this is when you plot your data you will find it like this and now some people they just proceed but some wise researchers they will stop and they will check the following points first in some cases the landslide information mentioned about specific event date of occurrence while in rainfall record that cover this event revealing that in this specific date there was no storm this is we mentioned during the presentation many times because the data provider they are different okay maybe the landslide provider when they mention about the rainfall they use different station if they are talking about here this two sta uh, two events and you have already just two stations for us we will consider some statistics to determine which station that we should follow but we don't know what kind of procedure that in the, the data provider of the landslide they follow and which station they choose we assume that this is the only stations available worth to mention that the meteorological data not the only source of rainfall we have the radar data that it's also available to consider but the resolution is not high as the rainfall or meteorological data also some agencies they have their own stations a local station so they know that in this specific there are some susceptible areas so they install their gauges so they might have a different reading from this definitely because here minimum you have like 10 kilometer 
and for you you just have these two stations second we have the error in the rainfall record so it doesn't mean that this record also is correct you need to find now what's the nearest station if they have the same altitude try to make correlation correlation it's a very important it will help you to use the data from one station or another station and switch between them also the correlation i mentioned actually here and uh, later on the practical so uh, because seriously in some days that you won't find any rainfall record in that day so if you have the correlation and the other station said no there was rainfall try to see how to choose or what amount that you use also it might have inventory information error we mentioned this missing rainfall we mentioned how to uh, use the imputation techniques uh, we mentioned also about if you have no station close to the rainfall so you need to do interpolation very important point actually number six now you are saying that I have a station here and some rain, uh, landslides around so I will consider this station but the most critical question actually that come from the reviewers, from editors, from the students, from me what is the coverage of the rain gauge? in another how much you can be sure that this record is correct within a specific dimension so can you tell me that for a diameter or a radius of 5 km everything within a 5 km is correct or it can follow this station record because in some countries you have a, a local storm for example in Malaysia you will have a local storm if you go within more than 6 or 7 km from the, the place that you want to see rain there maybe you are in, on the line so maybe if you reach to this six kilometer and you see behind you there are no uh, any sort of wet areas on the other side it's wet and it's very very uh, severe rainfall so you need to understand for this information you can get it from the type of the gauge and the altitude and so and the I'm sure the meteorological department the data provider very good point uh, you see yeah it's true generally you can see many landslides happen in the same day but your daily your data it's a just a daily data it's not an hourly data so you can see you have one record about the uh, amount but you have too many landslides in this case you can't do anything you need just to consider one landslide and delete the others because they have the same value so there will be one point above the other above the other one in the figure in the, the excel not in the map in the map yes you have them everywhere but in the excel calculation it will just take one value number eight hot very hot you will see the a low rainfall produced landslides while the heavy rainfall did not why is that as we mentioned it's depend about the soil about the porosity about the condition so it might be uh, antecedents or might be accumulated so in this low rainfall it's just like the straw that is break the horse back it will be like five days continuously and in the last day just within five or ten millimeter you witness a landslide while the heavy rainfall for example the storm just started today and usually this area it need it was dry long time there is there was no rain so you need to see maybe after three days you'll see landslide so always try to use the sense when you work on this tricky topic missing dates and low amount of points there is nothing to do about this about uh, missing dates you follow the amputation but about the low amount of points already you have an inventory and it has a low amount of points but there are no dates within some of them so you should take a decision to reject sometime really you need to reject the uh, inventory if if you have for example less than uh, five points around the stations or uh, the steady area is quite huge and the distances between the stations quite large i want to mention that really to get this kind of data it's expensive so some researchers if they get just a, a limited number of points they just proceed yeah and sometimes i'm i do it like this i this uh, because you need to do such kind of primary study 
you need to do some initial kind of explanation about what happened this is steady area so when you collect the data try to be very clever and very hard working about collecting any small details in newspapers reports thesis papers and information from social media as well yeah the last point that where the landslide are clustered and few are scattered this is about the outliers for example if you see here very good example we have this one event here okay so you can assume that in uh, this is an active area so if you think that this is correct the data that uh, we can say for example this point is given by address not about uh, uh, coordinates so you look at it here so you might feel that no it should be nearer or should be up or should be down so most of the time the outliers are a tricky topic if you have enough points try to ignore it or use it as a reference just to validate your rainfall record but it's really risky to take one point and consider the threshold here because it's always it will cause a problem in the figures always it will show you that whenever you plot you have one value it has very low amount of rainfall definitely because you have very far station but you have landslides so always your figure will suffer from something like like this for example it will come here or it will come here very low intensity okay it will become so it will just take the line lower and you will have more none or more false alarms passing the line so you see here if we don't have these two points we are more much happier then we can take the line further up most more points far not certain it will make problems later on for us to take a decision about where to plot our line so now I just want to show the another technique for uh, grouping the points for example now we said this is an outlier so this point is considered outlier or not if they are grouped then we need to delete both of them if we are if you don't have a station here okay so how to group the points how to understand if there is one outlier and has another outlier in the same group you need to delete this process can be done with the tools that we call shared nearest neighbors clustering this tool it's it can be added with the concave concave hull so you need to go to the to add it as a plugin go to the plugin manage the plugin here you need to write the I have it already but you need to add it actually because it's not coming with it so you will just add the concave up it's installed already if it's not installed you just download it and install it after you install it you will go here you will search for the shared nearest neighbor cluster Okay, you will choose it which input I will work on the original data number of neighbors number of neighbors if this number it's become high you can see a uh, less number of groups if you make it 10 maybe you'll see only one or two groups if you make it two or one you will find too many neighbors and five it's in the average so cluster based on location okay field on it now you choose the five it will just give you a general idea about the grouping then you can select later between the numbers here. yes so the output it's also a, a feature so this output if you put it up here or whatever now you need to make the properties it has already the attribute table classified based on the group so just that from single we make it as categorized classified it's fine it shows us only two groups here it will be two colors yes 
okay so now you see the cluster so this is two groups here if you increase the number you will get active wine group but if you decrease it if you decrease now we go to the original data again we'll make it maybe one you will see the attribute now become 21 categories specify see we have almost 12 group okay you see every group now has become together so one it's very small five it's a bit high for this number okay so you can choose maybe two or three it will give you a nice cluster but already here there is no clear cluster because this those points almost outliers you just have the, a good cluster in here so this is two techniques using the shared nearest neighbor cluster and the distance matrix i depend on the distance matrix to delete the outliers So now we need to find the uh, reliability uh, and it's as uh, simple as the difference between the total number of storms so how many days uh, uh, how many storms storms as, uh, as we said is not one day no it's maybe two days continuously it's one storm three days continuously it's one storm okay one day rain it's one storm from start the rain to the end this is the storm maybe one week continuous it's one storm okay so this will be uh, a total number of storm not minus the exceeded divided by the total number of storm okay so total number of storms as we found it earlier it was a three uh, thousand nine hundred times right the uh, storms happen see how many times of rain occurred okay the, uh, minus the F3, this amount, and the right. So this is the real ability now. So that's mean that this filter or this threshold was able to remove 80% of the non-landslide days, but it couldn't prevent almost 18% uh, 18 percent. 18 uh, percent of the total storms from passing to the upper side okay so this is 82 but don't look this is an absolute this is as we said this uh, a relative value now we will check the five days again the same issue we will just count how many days exceeded wow that's very bad almost 1000 times exceeded or false alarms or the alarm give alert uh, give us a sound but it has nothing it's just a false alarm okay and it's give 71 yeah it's less than this one and 10 days much worse 15 even worse okay one month is the worst case so you can see that it's the 82 person so now we can't say no this is the case we need to consider the rest of the thresholds the id and the edo okay this is why we put the equation okay to uh, see the reliability of this curve otherwise the plot is ready now Okay, but visually you will understand it is not a nice plot the line is not look like a very clear threshold between the non and the slides so we we'll continue uh, to draw and for every plot you will have the equation so you will plot take the equation this is 55.363 
we'll go to the file we'll put the equation here you see 55.3 and putting x as the file and get the results so, so far this is the antecedent any issues else divide by total and make it the uh, normalized it's just one value you divide but this is the ideal uh, threshold of the antecedent you can add more days or you can start with this result so in so far we completed our uh, steps the processing for the threshold we start from cleaning the data we deleted some events that it was not uh, belong or they, they were just happening the same day when we transfer to QGIS and we learn what kind of information we need to transfer and how to convert the points and then we applied the distance matrix and the uh, nearest neighbors and we uh, find the groups and we deleted the outliers then we got the correlation correlation between the stations that it was important as we mentioned that if you need to choose any events within the two stations you can rely to any station if the correlation between them is high then we plotted the data and we saw that uh, the behavior of the points that it at some points they are not happening during the peak days but it might happen with uh, some days that is not the maximum rainfall but in this other day within the maximum you can't witness a landslide but if just a low number of a low amount of rainfall it can trigger landslide and this is we talk about due to the antecedent uh, events then we applied the E and I and D and we show the equations and we in details we uh, explain every parameters within those equations and we explain what's the passive and the active which is passes the thresholds and finally we discuss the reliability index and which alternative is the best that we can choose from the other options and then we came to the table analysis and we discussed the outputs. So I wish that this course was useful for you. It's almost like a, um, a unique course that I never find a video that explain all the process from A to Z. Please check, use your data. The Excel file will be there. I will add more documents, supported documents from the literature that you can support your arguments. And you have the websites, the table, so please, Try to follow the steps and if you have any issues or if you stop somewhere write in the comments and by q and a we will push you forward to continue or your research or to push your result to be uh, successfully visualized so thank you very much and i have a very good luck for everyone and happy learning and see you for next course this is omar al -Tawini.